He goes, yeah, why? Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, you got hit like it's Michael Jordan. They know they got you for like, and with him, it's like, you got 14 minutes. Like, then you got 13 minutes. And he'll tell you the whole way. You got six more minutes. You better get your shot. And they go, just say it, Mike. Just say it in the camera. And he goes, oh, boy. I, I shaded with a triangle. I think, it was, I think it was, I was trying to get a Carmelo Anthony going. But it, it, Love I guess it's, it's, I'm surprised the Celtic want to, fan wants to look like a neck. Oh, shit. So, so what you you said stay grounded, but when I came back east and we started breaking balls at like the Boston Comedy Club, that's that's when I felt the most grounded. But little did I know, I was taking it up a notch to like the boiling point where people were going. Well, maybe he was trying to prove that you was you was still grounded, but it came it might have came off yeah. different. There's I mean, no it, doubt about it. It and changes. I, you change. You can't not look. I I my girl told me this. Like I'm way too. Accommodate into strangers. Like I talk to strangers. And I just have started conversations. And, you told them that, and, and I just stopped it. And it's it's hard to do. Well, it's hard to when somebody says, "Hey, Patrice, what's yep. up, man?" And you for you you go through that like it's four seconds in your brain, but as fast as your brain works, it's like a fifty thousand person Rolodex and situations and places where I could possibly know this person from. And you, I'm betting you. Patrice, you don't want to be like, fuck, this person's going to think I'm a dick because I don't remember them from that thing. I and then you go, hey, what's up, man? And then you realize halfway through, I have no idea who this person is. I, I now, I try to carry myself like a dude that you shouldn't, like if you go, oh, that's you the dude from, especially if somebody says something. I, I, years ago, I did this show to Jury, and I saw... um the lady from Ghostbusters. That's who she was to me. The, the, the old librarian from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Evidently, this woman is some kind of, uh, Oscar nominated. Hey, hon. Yeah. Who played the librarian in Ghostbusters? She's an old lady. She's been a night court? No. She's, she's All like, right, so you, I'll look at it. It's a Gwenny Weaver. No, the old lady from the librarian. Well, we'll figure it and out. And she was in a, she was in the the movie where um where where De Niro was retarded or or sick or had a stroke or something. Oh, uh, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Yes, she said that's all of them. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> it was uh <laughs> was it Helen Mirren? No, Helen Mirren. Stiller and Mirren. Just the the old lady that played the librarian, but but she got mad. Oh, you saw her. I saw her. All right, and she got mad. Cause I, I, she was, I said, man, I recognize you. What you do? And then she's like, what you do? Yeah, right. And she's like, have you, have you seen, you must have seen the movie, you know, love is a tender moment, right? Like, where I want to ask her. And I'm like, no, I ain't it. Alice Drummond. Alice Drummond. Never heard of her. Alice Drummond. And so, so, so she goes, she was so disappointed. Good old, what's her name? Yeah. So she, so she was well, disappointed. Well, she's an asshole. She's playing. But, but that's what I'm saying. I knew her from what I knew her from. Right. So I go, I go, I knew her from Ghostbusters. Right. And she said, and she breathed hard. She went, oh, Ghostbusters. She I go. On, she was on the Cosby Show. Like she, I'm looking at her IMDb right now. New York News. To Wong Fu. I know her from the Ghostbusters. I'll tell you right now, lady. You ain't shit. <laughs> but she got upset. So sometimes if I see maybe somebody you didn't in the see street, me in To Wong Fu. <laughs> if somebody sees me on the street and say something I don't like, I notice that I get like if somebody's like, you know, <laughs> like when I was going to Brazil, they call me. Uh, Patriki. So if somebody's like calling me Patriki in the but street. But that's because they don't speak English. Nah, Patriki, like, because they know. No, no, no. When I went to Brazil, I got this nickname Patriki when I used to go to Brazil all the time. And when I came back and did the radio, I talk about it, but they call, or Norton wrote his book. Norton wrote his book and put Patriki in there. <laughs> And now, you know, some people might go, Patriki, just straight up say Patriki. So it's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I love to, you know, to come at you a certain way. Right. But they'll just go, Patriki. And you go, you look, and I give them a, hey, what's up, bro? Like a real nasty kind of. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. Today, today, today. Or, or not even that, but like a more of a, what's up, man? I'm walking the streets. Hey, how you doing? I acknowledge your existence, but, you know, don't call me that. In the street, because you're gonna get that. But I could give you a lot more though. I'm a dude that will talk to you for right. a good ten minutes if you like. When you know it's an off-duty cop. If you, if you like, know, hey, what's up, man? You staying safe? 
if you if you act in a certain way, I'm gonna give you something. I, I'm I'm really like that dude in the street. And so the thing right now in my career that I'm getting used to, Jay, is uh, is this idea of not being able to be in the street or not being able to. It's nutty, man. Not be like you can't be around everybody like that. I was at the pharmacy the other day picking up like sodas. And Dwayne Reed and the lady goes, I haven't seen a pharmacist because I haven't been in New York in like six months. And she goes, how are you doing? It's Russian lady. I says, good. She goes, you had a baby? Like, so she, I haven't seen this lady in six, she knows I had a baby. I haven't seen her. Like from the news. Right. The fake, you know, that bullshit news. Right. And she goes, oh, that's why you look so tired. But I just slept like 11 hours and I had a nap. I felt great. And I looked at her and I go, nope, just ugly. And everyone in line and looked at me like, and looked at her like, this is really uncomfortable. But people say like the stupidest shit. And I think it's because when you're a comedian, they think they know you. Like if you see Jim Carrey walking down the street or Eddie walking down the street, people aren't going to be able to stay away from them. But if you see Pacino walking down the street, it's like this reverence, this silence, like, Holy shit, Michael Corleone. But that's that, that's why they should have more. The, the documentaries that they have about comedians have never touched on the complete. Well, one did that was close, maybe, but the complete misery of of comedians, man. The miserable people. I, 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 Are you miserable? I'm all, all the time. Because I'm. My <clears> wife <throat> says I don't. She she thinks I'm an actor that acts like a comic because I have none of the. Miserable. I'm always happy. Yeah, I'm. Miserable. I have no no damage like thing that happened to me. I'm miserable just because you just wake up pissed off. Yeah, I wake it, up it like keeps, let's go it kick keeps some me ass. Going. I wake I, up, let's do it. I don't like disappointment. So so I'm miserable like. But see, I just file disappointment. Like it's just like when they hit hyperspace on Star Wars, right? And all those lights come at you. Like just some of those are disappointment. You just let, they just fly past. Like fuck it. Keep going. But I mean disappointment just on a basic day of something spoiling my happiness. Just mean it's just if I sing, feel like just singing zippity doo Having to come here. I'm sure you were uh, you, like, it's a great idea. And then when you actually go from Jersey City into the city, you're like, the fuck am I doing? Well, yeah, you're thinking of ways to. Yeah. But I, but I'm, but I'm. I would have come and got you. But I, but I, I actually. <laughs> She's coughing like I don't feel good. <laughs> JJ, I can't come in. I gotta cough. I I actually am getting a lot better with that because I I go okay I'm gonna do it because I start running down immediately I start running down excuses to not do something yeah and then I'm like well he's here and is is you know he's asking I I got nothing to do so I'm trying to get into this thing where it's really where I don't have no 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 wait uh-huh. I have to I'm 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 trying to get into this thing where I don't. Let laziness stop me. I've done that. I've done, I've said, I've made, I've, I've fortified an excuse that sounds really good, but it's, it's based on really laziness. But I'll have, I'll have an amazing, an amazing scenario to make this laziness legitimate. If you, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, we've all done it. So if I, you get out of like stuff with your family, like, yeah, ah, I broke my arm. Exactly. I just broke my arm, Jay. And they see you like two days later and you're like, you know, it turns out it wasn't broke. And you yeah. got this Steve Cato. <laughs> yeah, I slept, I slept on my arm, man. Patrice, I never said I broke my arm. <laughs> it's so inside. So I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying you know, I did this. I'm not saying I did it because I had nothing to do. I was I'm say, saying, that's what we're I'm saying, saying for, that I, I, guess. Was, I was, no, I was, I'm saying that I did it because I, I didn't have anything to do, but I, in, my instinct was to go, I can't do it. That's my, that was my instinct. Like when I did Mark Marin's, we did it at the studio when we were both doing ONA at the same day. Oh yeah. So I almost couldn't get out of it. So it was like, it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm doing this as a favor to Jay because I'm not doing nothing. It's more or less, oh, let me, I don't have, I'm not doing nothing on Monday. So all I would do was just, it gave me an excuse to get up and actually be in show business. If that makes sense, yeah. Because I would, I would just stay in the bed. And people will come to your shows because of this too. If this will be out like uh, November, the Dece- if you got a December date, same here. I got. Oh, I'm supposed to say this. Uh, More stories podcast is brought to you by. Are you Uncom- getting paid, you son of a bitch? No. And now I got to do it over because you just you you you. I'm going to interrupt if you're getting paid for these podcasts. No, I don't make a penny. Really? Never took a dime. Brought real. You never bravo- took a dime. Is not never. I've never gotten paid. Really? Never. Is received. it a labor of love? Yeah. 
It's because people go to your shows when they hear it. I mean, you get paid in the long run when people go, when you're at like the Tempe Improv and you go, this is oddly full on a Thursday. And they're yelling out lines from the podcast from like two months ago. Really? Yeah. How long have you been doing it? This will be, what, like six, 17th, the 17th one or so, 16, 17? Over a course of what, this year? Every week. Every Thursday it comes out. You, you've only been doing it six months maybe? What's that? That's, it. That's that? it. Started in like June with Barry Katz as my guy. I couldn't even get anybody to come to my house. What, what, what was the, what was the motivation? Uh, every opening act on the road was like, do you want to do my podcast between shows? <laughs> What's it? Why does everybody that's opening for me have podcasts? And then Tom Segura was in Vegas with me and Tommy's super funny. And he said to me, I didn't sell dick. And he goes, if you did the podcast, when I first talked to you about the podcast, this would have been sold out every show. And I said, really? And he told me how Rogan does like, he had to move from clubs to theaters because of, not because of UFC, because of podcasts. So I did it with the super long term vision of I want people to come see my comedy because I like making people laugh. And I want, you know, when you do the radio and you go through all the motions and then you go up there on a Friday and they're like, eh, a little slow. You know, it's game two of the fucking Potsdam intramurals. And you're like, I don't give a fuck if it's game seven, Russia versus USA. Like, I'm here. Let's do it. Right, right. So I just wanted to sell more tickets. So it's happened. I saw it already. But did you think that it would do that right away? I was told in no uncertain terms by Tom Segura, by Joe Rogan, and then by when I talked to Kevin Smith, it was, you know, you don't understand. This is what's happening. I said, so this is like the future. And they went, no, this is now. Like you're actually on the wave now on the board surfing this shit into where it's supposed to be. Like you're not ahead of it. You're not behind it. It's exactly right now. This is what's happening now. Like radio is going away quick and everyone's going to start doing podcasts and you can just drive home. Like today, you and Vaughn could just hit like the Holland Tunnel and go, let's listen to like someone we want to listen to. Like our, fr- like whether it's you go anywhere, you go Adam Carolla, you can go like Cornell West, you can go Rogan, you can go Marin. So what are they hearing this on? They go to iTunes and they download it and it goes into their iPod. Like if they're going to the gym, listening to music. It's it's ridiculous. Okay, somebody when I did when I did another podcast. Sound you fuck. I'm saying okay, good. Marin. When I did yeah. Marin's. WTF Mark Marin, the number one podcast in the when world. When I did Marin's, and he was doing it, it wasn't. And this wasn't a long time ago. It was basic. It was like when I did it, I was like, this is interesting. I was looking at his setup, and I went out that day and got up the whole setup to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is going you stupid. Like, <laughs> Like I went out and bought Radio Shack. I bought this. I bought this whole thing that I'm Radio at. Shack. I swear to God. And I'm gonna need a lot of batteries, partner. I went to <laughs> I bought the bigger version of, of this thing. I bought a small this thing. Yeah. You were I the TR eight oh eight. I bought called it mics, nice everything. You needed a backup. Right? I'm almost I'm probably gonna buy this. C D P crew. This is I, the whole thing, man. I'm telling you. I was gonna do the podcast and then I was like, ah. Cause you went through Guru's will, <laughs> see if he left any, see if Premier left any equipment behind. Cassette players. I, I did the whole thing. And then. And then what's it doing now? It's, I don't even know where I put it. I know it's in my garage. The all equipment somewhere. You have a garage in Jersey City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Jersey City to me, cause when I grew up, Jersey City was just concrete, bad news. But now I think the Nets, are they responsible in part for like turning the city around? Oh, no. No? Not, not even a second, not even close. It's just they rebuild it because it's a it's all a the university radio stations there. are there. Saint Pat Saint Saint something University. Saint uh, something, the patron saint of what? Saint something, Saint Patrick. No, that's that's him. Good old what's his name? I think it's Saint Patrick's University. They buy up a lot of that crap. <laughs> Is it Saint Patrick? No, Saint John's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's University. So and they're also building all the stuff. radio stations moved across the river, like Z100 and all those people. They're all up there, but they're, they're on the water. The I live deep in in Promiseville. Like they promised to, when I bought my house and when I went into the <laughs> when I went into the uh, the thing to buy acres it, acres and a dog, and they showed that they had a painting <laughs> of uh, of what it was going to be. So then you had the house up, like you could buy. Oh, this is what's going to be the Jetsons. They had 
ten, everybody had one of your dogs, and 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 everybody jet packs. Everybody had jet packs. Everybody had this. It's oh, this is in Eight three years. Pool. And then what? How? What do you got? Just like a it's condo. A, it's a um, it's the first phase. I live in the first phase. Is that gonna f- of a five phase construction? He goes, yeah. Why? Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, no. you got to hit like it's Michael Jordan. You know they got you for like, and with him, it's like you got fourteen minutes. Like, then you got thirteen minutes, and he'll tell you the whole way. You got six more minutes. You better get your shot. And they go, just say it, Mike. Just say it in the camera. And he goes, oh boy. I I shaded with a triangle. I think it was I think it was like, I was trying to get a Carmelo Anthony going, but it, it, Love I Mello. guess it's. I'm surprised the Celtic want to, fan wants to look like a neck. Oh shit. So. Ooh. What you you said stay grounded, but when I came back east and we started breaking balls at like the Boston Comedy Club, that's that's when I felt the most grounded. But little did I know, I was taking it up a notch to like the boiling point where people were going. Well, maybe you was trying to prove that you was you was still grounded, but it came it might have came off yeah. different. I mean, There's no it, doubt about it. It and changes, I, man. You change. You can't not look. I I my girl told me this. Like I'm way too. Accommodate into strangers. Like I talk to strangers. And I just have started conversations. And, you told them, that? And, and I just stopped it. And it's it's hard to do. She's been night court. No, she's she's All like. Right, so you, I'll look I, it up. It, it, it's a Gwyneth Weaver. No, the old lady from the librarian. Well, we'll figure it and out. And she was in a she was in the the movie where um where where De Niro was retarded or or sick or had a stroke or something. Oh, uh, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirra. Yes. She said that's all of them. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's a, it was, uh, it wasn't Helen Mirra. No, Helen Mirra. Stiller and Mirra. Just the, the old lady that played the librarian, but, but she got mad. Oh, you saw her. I saw Who? her. Well, it's hard to, when somebody says, Hey, Patrice, what's yep. up, man? And you, for you, you go through that, like, it's four seconds in your brain, but as fast as your brain works, it's like a 50,000 person Rolodex and situations and places where I could possibly know this person from. And you, I'm betting you, Patrice, you don't want to be like, fuck, this person going to think I'm a dick because I don't remember them from that thing. I, and then you go, hey, what's up, man? And then you realize halfway through, I have no idea who this person is. I, I now, I try to carry myself like a dude that you shouldn't, like if you go, Oh, that's you the dude from, especially if somebody says something. I, I, years ago, I did this show, The Jury, and I saw, um, the lady from Ghostbusters. That's who she was to me. The, the, the old librarian from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Evidently, this woman is some kind of, uh, Oscar nominated. Hey, hon. Yeah. Who played the librarian in Ghostbusters? She's an old lady. That lady 